Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Black Cloak issue number one. Oh my God, is Professor Bill actually reviewing an, an indie comic book? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I get books thrown at me from all over the place. And unfortunately, I have to say no to pretty much every single person who, who sends me a request. Hey, could you check out this book? Hey, could you check out this book? Hey, could you check out this book? I usually got to say no. In this particular case, though, I was like, uh, no, I'm the, oh wait, Kelly Thompson does this book? Okay, fine, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. I, I really am. I'm going to say this. It is both fantastic and fantastical. And Image Comics suggests something. that They, they give a, an idea of what this comic book, a likening of this comic book to, uh, to Saga, the Image Comics Saga series. And while I did not make that initial conclusion myself, after reading that Image thinks that, I said, yeah. Yeah, I can really see that. Let's get to about who made this comic book, and we'll go on from there. So the, the, the writer is Kelly Thompson. The art and colors are by Meredith McLaren, and the letters are by Becky Carey, Becca Carey. The editor is Charles Beecham. I got this book one entire month in advance, so the book is actually going to be released on the 11th of January, 2023. So, uh, yeah, you got plenty of time to pre-order this book. And hopefully by the end of this video, I will get you to see with clarity why you should, in fact, pre-order this book. It's going to be $4.99 US, more than 50 pages. Yeah, yeah, I think that ordering this instead of waiting for it to show up uh, in your comic book store would be a really good idea. Again, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. For now, the story, look... I'm not usually a fan of looking at new comic books because uh, like, I don't even like looking at DC comic books for the most part because every five years they're going to have some kind of a crisis on this earth, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to have to relearn who Superman is and relearn who Batman and Wonder Woman are. And I'm just not freaking interested in that. It, it's too much effort. It's like, I know who freaking Superman is. Why are you changing Superman? What's the matter with your brain that you would do something like this, you know? Um... So then I turn and I look at Marvel and it's like, everything stays the same. You either know the history of this character or you don't. But either way, you don't have to relearn the character. You don't have to relearn the world. I've missed the last several runs of Captain America. I still know who Captain America is. I jump on the, you know, the latest book and I'm like, ah, that's really good. Wow. I'm not that lost, you know, and I love that. So if that's how I feel about Marvel versus DC, how am I going to feel about an image comic books? where there's an entire new world that I have to get used to. I have to learn a whole new freaking world and be like, you know, oh, oh, so this is the backstory of this world. Oh, so that's who this character is. Oh, that's who all these other characters are. That's too much work. It's too much work. I'm getting, I'm getting older. I'm getting set in my ways. All right. I don't want to hear you new music. Get off my freaking lawn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just, but I checked this book out and the, Biggest thing that was going to tick me off and make me say I'm not reading this is if it took too long to understand the world. Well, I get to the end of this comic book and I understand enough about this world that I want more and, for crying out loud, sons of guns. There was not one single, not, not one page, not one preamble, not even one word bubble. Give me any kind of... Um, exposition. Plenty of backstory in this, but nothing is done through exposition. Everything is done in the form of, here's a quick little something, here, like like tweets are longer than what happens in this book, where they just, you know, oh, they're, you know, the old ways, or that you could, they don't actually even say, you figure it out on your own. It, it's show, don't tell. The old ways were that if somebody ticked you off, you can kill them. It was a wild west out here. All these fairy type creatures. There's literally, literally fairies. There's elves. There's um, satyrs, right? There's mermaids. All these different fantastical creatures out here, much like with Saga. And there are politics involved, much like with Saga. Very different story in here than Saga, I'll tell you that. And I don't want to make these, I don't want to make too many comparisons, but I want you to understand what you're getting into if you get into this book. If you liked Saga, you're going to like this. If you loved Saga, you're going to love this. Excuse me. I don't think I did a, any reviews on Saga 
I there's a lot of comic books I read I just don't do reviews on, but I loved Saga. Like it was out of control how good that book was. And here I'm seeing the exact same thing again, just a month in advance. Um, I the main character is an elf who is a black cloak. Okay, mind you, this title is not called the Black Cloak. It's not called the Black Cloaks. There's no the in here. Nothing plural. So it makes it seem like the book is about the cloak itself. Whose cloak? Because she's got a partner, and there's a whole bunch of black cloaks out there, right? And there's certain rules regarding the black cloaks. First off, you're not. it's not the Wild West anymore. You're not allowed to just kill people in general. It's it generally frowned upon. And you're not allowed to even so much as disobey a black cloak. God forbid, actually put hands on them. That, that'll get you shot. That'll, that'll get you arrested. That'll get you in a whole world full of trouble. Um, it's a new world, baby. It's a new world, right? We all got to learn how to get along. And I love the way that none of that is explained, but it's shown instead. Guys, there's a reason why if you travel to a different part of the world, whether they speak your language or not, you find, an, like if you're American and you find another American, like, oh my God, you know? Dude, if you're freaking Cambodian and you find a Cambodian wherever you go, it's like, oh my God, you know? And you become instant best friends. Plenty of Americans and Cambodians back in America and Cambodia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're not friends instantly with any of you know any of them, but you see somebody someplace else, it's like, oh man, you share very sim maybe not even the exact same, but you share very similar values to what I share. We've eaten the same foods, we know the same like I can trust your opinion. I don't know any of these people. I don't know if I can trust their opinion on food, on dress, on anything. I don't know. You know, so they might say, oh, the best place to eat is over here. And you go there and it's like, this is, you know, but you see somebody from where you're from, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, go here. It's really good food. But like, okay, cool. We have a similar taste palette, right? It's natural. It's ingrained in us. It's, it's not about racism. That's not, believe it or not, that's not what the world is made of. It's made of a bunch of people who want to feel as though we can trust everybody else, that we've got similar, you know, if you say, oh, it's cold outside, but you're from freaking, you know, like equator, you know, someplace on the equator, and I'm from, you know, closer to the North Pole, I don't want to hear you saying it's cold outside because that might be t-shirt weather for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I, we always want people around us who have similar values, similar beliefs, similar understanding of the way the world works, similar everything, right? We're climatized to each other. Um, you see that so prevalently in this story. It's amazing to see that. People who are very different from each other, who have to get along because it's the law, damn it. And we don't need more Wild West crap out here. These black cloaks have to go around. They have to investigate any kind of a crime. Well, it turns out that a prince of the city was just killed. Main character was supposed to be married to this person. Uh-oh. So this person's got a conflict of interest, right? At the same time, this is a member of the royal house. She comes from the royal family. Nobody else is going to have the access that she has, so she can't go out of it with a with a conscientious objector situation. She must be involved in the case. And she's not disappointed that she's got to be. She wants to figure out this crime more than anybody. But that being said, she shouldn't be involved in this. But she needs to be. It is what it is. It's a new world. <laughs> you, have to, you have to figure things out as you go along sometimes, right? Remember when I said that no one's allowed to hurt or even disobey a black cloak? It's not quite the same thing when it comes to the royal family. So this this has to be negotiated. And this is this is an, an intricately woven path that has to be followed, a dance macabre that um, could get a lot of people killed. And I love it. I love the when she goes into the royal when she passes the royal courtyard, especially where she's been exiled from there. And and like it's one of those things where it's like, if I ever see you again, brah, it's on sight. <laughs> like it's, that's dangerous. <laughs> that's dangerous. Like, I will kill you on sight. And you know this. 
but you got to go there. And you're hoping that this black cloak is going to be enough, knowing that it's probably not going to be enough. That's funny. That's, that's a little dangerous. Guys, I loved this story. I really did. An entire world was given to us with no info dumps, no bend to speak, as it were. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, the art in this comic book. Now, initially, again, if Kelly wasn't involved in this comic book, I would have I would have flipped through the comic book and said, eh, this art isn't for me. Is that a bad thing? No, because it's just for me. And there's been plenty of times people have said, I don't know, I liked the art. There are other times where people say, I agree with you. The art sucks. I don't think the art sucks. I think that it's misplaced. But then again, I also see why it was done the way it was done. Look, I've looked into uh, Meredith McLaren. And she's been doing her thing longer than I've been doing this thing. That's for sure. So she, she's also worked with Kelly before, at the very least on Gem of the Holograms. But she's also done uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. She's done a lot of stuff. She's got... Um, a, a web series called Hinged, which is pretty cool and it deserves a plug. Hey, I just did. Um, she's done a lot. And I love the idea that she's getting back with Kelly to, to do this world. Also, I realized that, you know, the, the, the work that she's done in Gem alone, very different than the work that she's done here. And she's the, the, the pencils, the inks, and the colors in this. So she's everything art is her on this. And she's done very different styles in pretty much every single one of the comic books she's ever done. So the art style in here, which I don't particularly like, is not her art style. It's a choice. And that's important. She chose this. So I had to go back and kind of look at this and recognize the storyboarding on this is fantastic. I'd have loved to see the original thumbnails that she did, if she actually even bothered to do them. But I love the idea, like, there, there's a scene where there's these, these creatures. They're basically rats. They look close enough to rats. We probably just call them rats. But they're called wraiths here. The way that you find out their names and, and the association and whatnot is actually pretty interesting. Because you see these things, then you hear the name in the middle of the comic book. And the end, you finally realize, oh, wait a second. Those rat things, they're called wraiths. That's the wraith. Oh, I get it. So when this guy said, hey, man, what do you think I am? Some kind of a wraith? I'm like... What does that mean? And then you realize later on, it means you think I'm a rat. Do you think I'm going to snitch? Holy crap, that's freaking great. I love the way that the book is set up. Back to the art. Um, there's a scene where this one satyr gets knocked the hell out. <laughs> Not really, but close close enough to it. He gets knocked down. And the wraiths start going after these little rat things. And then somebody starts shooting at them. And I'm just like, um, I don't get it. It's shown not told. You go back and you look at the story and uh, the, the previous panels and plain as day, the one um, girl who's, who's throwing the punch, the, the lead investigator, lead Black Cloak, the, the, the protagonist of the story, at least, let's say that. You see plain as day, she's got a holster with a gun underneath her cloak. And it's like, oh, son of a gun. So it shoots little magical boo 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 things, right? Interesting. Okay. <laughs> It was right there, but the way that the, the panels were set up, you couldn't realize exactly what was going on. And you see she's actually reaching for it at one point. So you can understand plain as day what happened, but you have to go back and look at it, or at least I did. I had to go back and look at it again. Look, I'm going to say this. Scotty Young does amazing work for kids. I would love to see him do more kids' books, right? But I don't want to see him writing or drawing Captain America and, and, and other comic books like that. I don't want to see his art and stuff like that. Really great for his variant covers. I don't want to see his, his work, his body work for here. Because that's his art style. It's just, it is what it is. And it's not what I want to see in adult comic books. You know, or, you know, I mean, adult, like, you know, the naked stuff. Oh, by the way, there's nudity in this comic book. Be warned. Uh, and very graphic subjects in here. Yeah. <laughs> Cannibalistic type stuff. Um... What do you call it? Now, I think that the, the art in this comic book, while initially seeming a little bit ill-fitting, Ill I understand why it was used. The it, It's that art style, and you can see from the preview images that, uh, that I put up, that um, the characters seem a little bit bulbous, 
but I think that's important because, again, this is a choice. She chose to draw, draw it this way. This wasn't what she was limited. It's not like, you know, this is all I got, guys. This is how I draw it. No, she chose to draw it like this. And she did that because she wanted to give them these fantastical creatures an almost cherubim-like um, facial structure and body structure. So it's like, oh, these are cute fairy type, you know, beings from the Feywild or whatever, but they've got regular human beings problems, right? They're anthropomorphized into having like an Aesop's fable. Um, I would have initially passed this up if Kelly wasn't involved in this book and I would have just seen the art in general, but seeing the layout, seeing the way that certain things were done, um, I can't say that I'm dissatisfied with the art. I would have personally asked for it to go in a different direction, to not be quite so cherubim-like. But that being said, I understand why it was done this way. So I'm not going to say I liked it or disliked it. I'm going to say it's interesting choice. Will it grow on me? Well, I've definitely got to read part two. So we'll see. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. Guys, I mentioned that this is very much like Saga, and this book is, uh, I, I'm reviewing this book a month in advance. I usually do not do that. I will usually hold on to a book in advance, but I figure this. I'm going to give you guys enough chance to think this one over. Don't think for too long, because if you catch the first printing of the first issue in the comic book stores and whatever variants you might want, I spotted, I think, four or five, then you have the opportunity to pre-order them right now and not miss the cutoff or anything like that. Um, you can, you should be able to pre-order this right now and get an extra copy in. And I think that, honestly, you should. Because if you have a copy of issue number one of, um, what do you call it? Um, oh, for crying out loud, any book, Saga, for instance, or The Walking Dead, right? Then you understand, holy crap, I am so glad I was able to get this, but did you get it when it first came out or did you buy it from somebody on eBay for a hundred bucks later on? I mean, you know, or, or more, you have a chance to get this at cover price right now. And I genuinely believe that by the time that issue, let's say 10 to be safe comes out, this will probably be one of those books that people are talking about big time. So again, you have a chance to be one of the first on board for this. And I would. Personally, I would. I don't really buy too many physical copies of books anymore. In the morning, I'm going up to Carlos, my guy. I'm going to be like, hey, brah, can you Gotham Central Comics and Collectibles right here in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, baby. I'm going to be like, yo, Carlos, hook me up with one of these books, bro. <laughs> because it's it's like that. Um, anyway, that being said, this was a really amazing first issue. I strongly recommend getting a hold of this. And you got time. Guys, like the video, watch an ad. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.